Patents cover all aspects of things we use in our lives, from the electronics in our smartphones, the electronics in our computers, to pharmaceutical products that cure our diseases, to medical devices that keep us healthy, even in consumer products like razors that keep our faces smooth and clean. In fact, in 2005, there was a patent case that the Federal Circuit addressed between Gillette and Energizer Holdings involving Gillette's Mach 3 razor technology. Let's talk about this case and use it as an example to understand the patent system, what is a patent, the scope of patent rights, and how long a patent lasts. Let's first talk about the patent system, the system that allows a company like Gillette or a technology startup to actually have patent rights. The first part of the patent system we'll talk about is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The main campus of the Patent and Trademark Office is in Alexandria, Virginia. It is massive and comprises several buildings. Over 7,700 patent examiners work at the Patent and Trademark Office, most of them in Alexandria, Virginia. This doesn't even include the support staff. It's these examiners that receive a patent application from an applicant, review it to determine whether the technology that the patentee is actually trying to cover in its patent is novel and non-obvious and deserving of a United States patent and ultimately decides whether to reject the application or to allow it. Recently, the Patent Office has opened up satellite offices in Detroit, Michigan, Denver, Colorado, Dallas, Texas, and Silicon Valley in California. The next part of the Patent Office we'll discuss is the federal courts. Because patent law is created under federal law, for a patentee to sue a competitor and allege that they're infringing the patentee's patents, that suit needs to take place in federal court. An initial suit would be filed in a district court, and the appeal of that case would go to the Court of Appeals of the Federal Circuit in Washington, D.C. This is different than most federal cases. In other types of federal cases, you file suit in a district court and the appeal would go to the, the regional appellate court, one of 12 appellate courts that geographically cover appeals coming from local district courts. But in 1983, Congress created the Federal Circuit to handle all patent appeals, regardless of where the district court was located that handled the initial case. Many people think that the creation of the Federal Circuit in 1983 led to the increased use of patents in the United States to protect technology because now the law was more foreseeable. There wasn't going to be a difference in views of patent law between the First Circuit and the Seventh Circuit. Now there was one court that determined the patent laws in this country. The next part of the patent system to discuss is the actual law itself. Patent law is created by the Patent Act. It's covered in Title 35 of the United States Code. The first Patent Act was enacted by Congress in 1790, but it's been amended several times since then. In fact, the American Invents Act enacted some of the dra most drastic reforms to patent law we've seen since the original act in 1790. Many provisions of this new patent law went into effect March 16th of 2013. So generally, that's what comprises the patent system. The United States Patent Trademark Office, the federal courts where patentees can enforce their rights, and the patent law of the United States.